Is this underwater paradise under threat from rising temperatures? Warmer waters bleach wild coral, weaken one of the climate's most important natural regulators and add acid to the ocean. The EU's climate change monitor Copernicus has declared that the average daily sea surface temperature has surpassed their records, which includes the ocean surrounding the UK, currently under a marine heatwave. We had a, a 240 day ish heat wave from around about um, October through to April this year. Um, and we're presently in a heat wave at the moment. Global atmospheric carbon dioxide has increased by 25% since I was born. So those heating effects are only going to get worse. There is an opportunity now to keep those temperature increases within bounds that the ocean can cope with if we take, you know, personal action. This is a snapshot of average ocean temperatures. The rise recorded in red is an illustration of the summer's marine heat wave. But although it appears similar to the temperature rises we have seen on land, the ocean change is far wider and for some more worrying, especially alongside other trends in our seas. Warmer waters mean that fishes and similar species need more oxygen, so they consume more oxygen, and that oxygen consumption can, re can reduce levels of oxygen in the water to a state whereby, you know, things will start to die. So rising temperatures could have an impact on our favourite fish and chips? The species themselves are still doing OK. They're moving northwards. They're more thing, more, more, moving more towards the Arctic. So our fishing fleets will have to go further in order to catch those fishes. So I don't think we're going to say goodbye to, to cotton haddock anytime soon, but uh, they might become more expensive. And that is the comparatively small cost of the climate catastrophe. The EU's record average temperature of 20.96 degrees Celsius is far above this time of year. This has been driven by rises in the North Atlantic and the Pacific, and there are consequences. Increasingly warm waters have less ability to absorb carbon dioxide, meaning more gas will remain in our atmosphere. The melting of Antarctic glaciers has accelerated, raising sea levels. And if this continues, lowlands will be submerged. This has been another summer of intensifying weather with neither the sea or land spared. These were the wildfires scorching the Mediterranean last week. But if weather is becoming more hostile, so too has the political climate for activists. This week, Greenpeace mounted the country home of Rishi Sunak in protest whilst the Prime Minister was on holiday. However, now the Environment Secretary has ordered officials to cut ties with the lobby group. The government say they no longer plan to engage with Greenpeace. Was your stunt worth it? One minister has said that for her one department. So as far as we know... An important department as well. An important department, but a department that's been, unfortunately, under the leadership of a government who didn't want to listen even before they shut us out. We constantly reply to consultations, we submit petitions, we write letters, we invite them to meetings, we do all of these tactics. Actually, I think this action has managed to elevate the debate. We've managed to talk to journalists like yourself, we managed to talk to the public about we need urgent action from this government and we're not seeing them take the issue of climate change seriously. This follows the Prime Minister's plans to grant 100 new licences for oil and gas developments, which would undermine net zero targets as temperatures of the world's waters rise. Sea life like this may be the first affected, but they will not be the last. This summer, there has been no holiday from the climate crisis. Each day is a new reminder of why major action is needed, and anything less will be a drop in the ocean. Well, we're joined now by John Abraham, a climate scientist and professor at the University of St Thomas in the United States. Thanks for joining us. In case anyone is tempted to just say, well, this is just El Nino, next year things will go down again, what's the answer? Well, it's not. I mean, humans are the reason the climate is warming. And in fact, my own research goes back to the 1950s, and we've shown that the ocean temperatures have been rising since the 50s. Now, why is this year particularly hot? It's because we have human warming and we have El Nino both pulling in the same direction. And this happens about every five or six years. If you look at the ocean temperatures, it's like a stair step. Every four or five or six years, the temperatures increase and then four or five years later, they increase again. So this is an inexorable 
unmitigating rise of ocean temperatures. And what happens in the oceans doesn't stay in the oceans. One of the reasons why climate scientists are so concerned is this affects every part of our planet and there are severe consequences even outside the oceans. So let's talk about those consequences. Let's start with the ability of the oceans to act as carbon sinks. Now, as, 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 they, as they warm, they're able to absorb less carbon dioxide. I mean, is, is it sort of, is it the, by the same sort of ratio? Yeah, that's a, a, that's a really good point. The ocean has been doing us a sort of tremendous favor for the last five, six, seven decades by absorbing both the heat from global warming, but also the carbon dioxide. And as the ocean gets warmer, it will be less able to absorb that carbon dioxide. And so the, pro the more and more of the carbon dioxide we put in the atmosphere will stay there. We call that a feedback effect. And it just makes more clear that we have to take urgent action now if we wanna get uh, control over this problem. I mean, when you say urgent action, I mean, how, how quickly would action to bring down emissions have, a, you know, have an effect on the oceans? How many, how many years lag would, would there be? Oh, there'd be many years lag. Look, the ocean is like a heavy freight train going down a railway. It, if a conductor puts his or her foot on the brake, it might take a kilometer for that train to stop. And the climate is just like that. Changes that we put in place now We'll only see the benefits a decade from now. But if we don't do it, a decade from now will be even worse. I mean, look, climate scientists have been saying for years and years and years, we've got to do something. Could you imagine the great situation we would be had we listened to climate scientists 30 or 40 years ago? Well, we didn't. But at least we could do something now. And, and it is important for people to know that action we take now, a dollar spent on reducing CO2 now, will pay off much more than a dollar into the future. So it is really important to take action now if we want to see the benefits a decade or so and, uh, into the future. And within the, the decade ahead, what, what will be the effect on marine biology and biodiversity and the food chain and all of those things? Well, some of the problems are in the ocean, as we mentioned we are already seeing the effect on biodiversity. Now, some uh, marine animals can move, as you heard in the lead up to my interview, but some can't. Coral is not able to walk or to swim away from high ocean temperatures. So coral is an example of one of the types of animals that is gonna be most adversely affected. But make no mistake, every animal in the sea or in the world's oceans are being affected now. But it's a really, really important to know that the problems are not limited to the ocean. I mean, rising ocean temperatures are affecting the weather all over the planet and are one it is the uh, reason for the incredible heat waves that we've seen even over land this year. So we're already seeing the effects of climate change in the ocean and on land. And those effects are going to continue to get worse into the future. So you expect there will be knock-ons from these temperatures that scientists are recording this month in terms of global weather? Oh, there already are. Um, all weather right now is affected by climate change. Now, what do I mean by that? We climate scientists say, like to say that a warming ocean puts weather on steroids. The ocean covers 70% of our planet. And as the oceans warm, heat and moisture or humidity get into the atmosphere and that's what drives weather and what it does is make the weather go from one extreme to the other and back to the first extreme more violently and more rapidly and so our weather is getting wilder and that is causing floods in many areas we have rising sea levels we have more heat waves and in some areas we get more intense droughts so what is happening in the oceans is already being affected uh, or already affecting the weather that we see on land. 